The Darth Retro Podcast is brought to you by the letter uh, T. Uh, T, the letter. Okay, so I don't get good sponsors these days. Who doesn't? Ha ha. The Darth Retro Podcast is a free-flowing conversation that occasionally touches on intelligent subjects, but mostly just sports, music, and life. And now, here is your adorable host, Tom Wagner. And welcome back to the podcast, hello, loyal, loyal listeners. This is episode... Uh, this is episode 14 of the Darth Retro Podcast. I am taping this on a pretty cloudy, kind of rainy day here in uh, the old Fargo, North Dakota. Um, I got a pretty, pretty stacked uh, port- uh, sports episode for you all uh, for this episode. I'm going to be talking about some uh, some results from the uh, NFL, se- NFL season, uh, which was uh, week Five it was, I think it was. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Highlight some of the games on that, and then do some a uh, little bit of uh, MLB playoff uh, updates. See, see how my picks are kind of doing so far, and then uh, sort of uh, um, uh, sort of an NBA slash um, Minnesota Timberwolves preview, I suppose. Uh, but, um, let's uh, start off with, uh, some NFL stuff, so let's, uh, get into that. So, it's been, uh, quite interesting, uh, week that was in week five of the NFL season. Uh, quite a bit of some, some upsets, a little bit of some surprises, some close games, some blowouts, just quite a bit of some good stuff in here. Uh, I'm going to start off off with the Packers and the Colts game, which I thought it was over by uh, halftime. I uh, I seriously thought it was. I mean, I thought our our defense was pretty much handling uh Andrew Luck pretty well at that at that point in the game. You know, the offense, I thought the offense was back to its old self with you know, Aaron Rodgers playing Playing like the old Aaron Rodgers, throwing, throwing touchdowns by throwing two to three to four touchdowns uh, game. You know, I thought, you know, I thought, you know, I couldn't see how the Packers would could have lost that game, other than the fact that our offense basically stunk up the second half, and basically our defense didn't step up to the task of stopping a rookie quarterback at 300 plus yards and it's it's it sucks you know it's definitely a loss that hurts i especially now that uh, Cedric Benson is out for 8 weeks and hmm, you know it's it's a sucky way to go you know but but we have to pretty much forget about that game and focus on the undefeated Texans going into week six. And that game is a Sunday night game on NBC. And I'm definitely in question about if we can actually beat uh, that really good Texans team. Uh, but anyway, I am pretty much done with that. Uh, game some other ones. Uh, I did pick the Cardinals to beat the Rams on Thursday night last week, and somehow or another the somehow the it was it seemed like a trap game, a trap game for the Cardinals because pretty much the Cardinals choked. <laughs> they just choked. So they they didn't get the. Uh, so they didn't get to keep the five and five and zero season instead of it's, uh, instead of it's the four and one uh, for this season, which which is pretty surprised. But I I did pick the Cardinals to win that game, but I don't know. <laughs> 
Um, so, you know, it's... Oh, well. Uh, probably one of the biggest, uh, biggest games was the, uh, the 49ers and on the Bills game. And pretty much the 49ers put up, uh, uh, pretty much a crap ton of offense. Uh, 621 yards of total offense. That's that's definitely absolutely unheard of. It's um, you know it's, it's surprising uh, how much how good the 49ers in that game were, and so if you're definitely a if you're a 49ers fan, you're definitely uh, looking at yourself pretty high so far in the season. Um, let's see what else happened this week. Uh, last night's game, the Texans and the Jets, uh, that game was a little bit more closer than I thought it would be. I I'd have to do, I have to give the Jets quite a bit, a little bit of some credit in this one. I thought. Uh, the Jets were gonna pretty much lax, lax in this game, uh, but you know I think despite as despite what happened, what has happened to them to them so far this season, they they definitely showed quite a bit of heart in that game. It it was it was impressive to see that, but you know unfortunately I was watching baseball instead of uh, football, which is quite a little bit of a surprise if you say so, if I say so myself. Um, but yeah, uh, Texans pretty much got a close win, which is which is pretty difficult in this league. I mean, if, if you can put up double digits uh, in a win in this league, it's pretty, pretty impressive, you know. And... Um, I don't know what else to talk about. Um, uh, I suppose how much uh, the Browns sucked <laughs> uh, against the Giants in their game at uh, uh, MetLife Stadium in uh, New Jersey. Um, really good game from uh, Eli, Eli Manning. 259 yards for three touchdowns and interception, which is pretty good. And somehow or another, the Browns pretty much laid an egg in the second quarter by giving up 20, count it, count it, 20 points on the second second quarter. And boy, that, that's if if you're a Bra if you were a Browns fan, like uh if you were like a Browns fan cheering on cheering them on in the first quarter, you were like, Yeah, yeah, we're gonna pull off the upset, we're gonna get our first win, you know. And then after the first quarter and so the second quarter and so half time, you're like, What the hell just happened? We just gave our defense just gave up twenty points to the defending champs. Uh so So definitely rough. Rough game to the uh, Browns fan. Uh, the Browns, the Browns just can't seem to get a break. They just don't seem to can't get a break, do they? So, um, uh, let's see what else can I talk about. Oh, the honorable mention to uh, uh, honorable congratulations to uh, Drew Brees who. Uh, who beat uh, Johnny Unitas's record of 47 touchdown, 47 games with a touchdown pass, and and uh, Sunday nights uh, Drew Brees broke that record, uh, and definitely a big congratulations to him, for he owns two pretty good records, so. Along with the ring, he's. I I definitely say if he was retiring now, I 
I probably give him a uh, Hall of Fame. Definitely Hall of Fame consideration. Uh, definitely Hall of Fame vote. Um, but the other than Drew Brees's record, record, uh, record-breaking accomplishment, uh, the Saints' rushing attack has been kind of limited. The Saints' rushing just doesn't seem that good. I mean. Their top rusher was Pierre Thomas, who who attempted nine times for 30 yards, and and his only long longest gain was eight yards. So, um, I don't know. It, it was it was an interesting game to watch. But the Chargers almost kind of, they the Chargers almost won, but somehow or another the. The Saints get their first win of the season, so interesting. But um, I'm pretty much uh, done with uh, this topic, so let's continue on to uh, MLB postseason update. Well, if you've been watching the MLB postseason so far, it's so far there's been quite a bit of some. Uh, surprises, some um, uh, definitely some series uh, that are that have gone into the wire, um, but uh, let's first start off with uh, Detroit and uh, Oakland series. Uh, Detroit is leading that series two to zero, and. And that game will be on uh, TBS. Uh, and that will be at uh, Oakland uh, tonight at around 9:07 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time, or 6:07 uh, uh, Pacific Time. And and so far, the Tigers have. Have held the have held their ground against the hot athletics, so it's gonna be pretty interesting to see what what happens in that that one. I I think I think Oakland is pretty good enough to uh, get get a win, and get their first win of the season. Um, so I'm thinking about maybe the Oak Athletics will get Game Three uh, in the books. Unless, unless Detroit wins it all, wins that series, and continues on to the ALCS. Uh, another game uh, that is on tonight, which starts in about half an hour or so, uh, is uh, the Giants and Red series. So far, the Reds have pretty much shocked the NL West. Uh, Champions, uh, the Giants. Uh, I'm I'm actually pretty surprised how how good the Reds have been so far this postseason. I mean, I think once once the Reds got into the postseason, they would probably challenge quite a bit of quite a bit of people. And somehow or another, I when I picked the Giants to represent the National League in the World Series, I'm 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 definitely kind of scratching my head on this one. So, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Red fans, you, you. I hope you can forgive me. But I think I think the Giants. Oh boy, I I think the Giants will lose this one, and the Reds will go on to the NLCS. And the two games that happened uh, yesterday. Uh, St. Louis and Washington. Uh, St. Louis's uh, bats pretty much woke up in the uh, game two, and that was a score of 12 to four. Uh, so, so there's definitely quite a bit of a series going on as that one moves to uh, Washington D.C. And I think it's been like. At least over 80 years since, almost 80 years since, 
uh, postseason game has been played in uh, Washington. So it's going to be pretty cool to see uh, what happens in that series. I I still feel the Cardinals will win that series, but it's going to be a very interesting series, that one. And the other one uh, against Baltimore and New York, uh, the Orioles uh, won a pretty tight one uh, by a score of 3-2, to two, and that series is tied up as that game will be moved to uh, Yankee Stadium in New York on TBS uh, tomorrow. And I still feel the Orioles will win that one. So, um, so yeah, pretty impressive so far. I, so, I, I love, I love postseason baseball. I, I totally dig it, you know. Uh, so, uh, let's, uh, continue on to the next topic. So, pretty much as of right now, the NBA season has, or the preseason has just gone, gotten underway, um, itself. Um, uh, there's, there are three games, uh, going on tonight. You have... Um, you have Milwaukee at Cleveland, uh, then you have, uh, Charlotte paying a visit to the Hornets, which will be the preseason preview of, uh, appearance of Anthony Davis and, uh, Austin Rivers, I th think, who was also drafted, uh, to the Hornets. Um, and then the other game was uh, the Memphis Grizzlies uh, go to the United Center to play against the Bulls of Chicago. And tomorrow night, I will be going to I will be going to uh, my first uh, Timberwolves game, which is a preseason game against uh, uh, the pre Indiana Pacers. And that game will be at the Fargo Dome, which is the um, um, which is kind of the big venue uh, here in town, uh, here in Fargo. And I'm I'm definitely looking forward to it. I I plan to take on quite a bit, take quite a bit of pictures of of the players themselves. Hopefully, I can get a picture of. Uh, K Love or Kevin Love, and so I don't know. Maybe I'm, I don't know if uh, Ruby Rubio is gonna be there, but you know, if I can get a picture of him, I I'll definitely I'll definitely share that on Facebook and Twitter as well as Instagram. Uh, in case those people people uh, don't know my Instagram account name is uh Darth Tom with no space space just D A D A R T H T O M so uh definitely add me on Instagram and I will follow you anyway uh take a look at uh take a look at uh the Timberwolves season I'm I'm actually I'm actually really excited to, uh, I'm actually kind of excited for them. I mean, it's for the first time in their history, which has been pretty short. I mean, they started out in 1989 as an expansion franchise, and I can definitely say for as long as I have been a Timberwolves fan, I, I'm, I'm definitely pretty excited. I'm excited for them, so, um, so, so in terms of, uh, the roster moves that we, uh, got, uh, for this past, uh, season, uh, off season, I should say, uh, we picked up, uh, we picked up, um, Brandon Roy, who was from, uh, Portland Trailblazers. 
Um, then we picked up uh, Chase Buttinger, who, uh, who was part of the uh, uh, the Rockets, who has been a pretty big key to the Rockets uh, roster, and pretty much the whole uh, ground of our team is basically to you know play defense to uh, score points you know and basically it starts off with uh, Kevin Love who's been who's been more than great to us you know and then you have uh, Ricky Rubio who was injured uh, into the season um, so so I think the pieces that we picked up, you know, Chase Buttinger, uh he's he's definitely a pretty good good player I suppose. Um, you know, he's not the greatest I would say, but uh but probably the biggest one is probably picking up Brandon Roy. Um you know, he has um you know he has been uh pretty good i suppose uh he has averaged uh a forty six percent uh uh field goal percent uh he has uh he has a uh, shot um uh let's see what else? Trying to find where his stats are. Uh, as far as minutes, he's averaged a good number of at least uh, at least 2,000 minutes for the first four years of his career. Uh, it was only last uh, in the 2010-2011 season. He only averaged uh, he got about. 1300 point 1300 uh minutes um uh so you know he has been injured but i i definitely can say that he's definitely quite a bit of a uh a big player for us and then you have Andre Kirilenko you have Derek Williams who uh, who is um, going into his sophomore season, if I remember right? Uh, so, so in terms of wins, uh, the Timberwolves got only about uh, 27 wins uh, the past season, which may not sound like much, but uh, in terms of uh, in terms of a 66 or a 66 game season uh, it's definitely quite a bit I mean some of our big wins last year was uh, against the Clippers I think that was uh, I think that was uh, a comeback from behind uh, win and I'm I'm pretty excited to be a fan of uh, Timberwolves I and pretty much in the NBA in general I'm pretty excited to um, I'm definitely excited to be an NBA fan for first time since, I don't know, since 1998. Um, uh, since uh, Jordan was a bull. I mean, that's been pretty much over a decade since i really been into uh, watching the uh, into watching the NBA. And for those and for those that um, have seen some of my other podcasts, I definitely have. I definitely have seen uh, definitely quite a bit of my share of basketball games uh, as a kid. Not really like uh, the professional feel of the NBA, but you know, I was uh, definitely a big Fargo Moorhead Bees fan. Which they were here. Um, 
but unfortunately they unfortunately by the time that uh, they folded I wasn't really into sports that much in general I you know I was I mean when I was uh, when I was a kid my my father was probably my biggest inspiration to be uh, a sports fan and pretty much when he died I pretty much lost kind of all interest in sports and it took me a good six years to really get back into it and it wasn't until basically 2006 that uh, it wasn't until 2006 that I really got back into sports and probably the most longest person longest time of the sports of the major sports was probably the NBA to really get back get really warm up to so if that really makes any sense or not but um but I'm definitely excited for the NBA I I will ask, I, I will gladly admit that, but, uh, anyway, I uh, got a bit of some, uh, news to talk about, uh, about a couple hours ago, actually, actually about, uh, three hours ago, he was, I was, uh, I was, uh, f uh, donating blood to the United Blood Services, and I donated, uh, double red cells which is quite a bit and um, you know I, I I love I love donating blood it's it's definitely one of the most worthy causes that anyone could ever get into um, I mean you basically get to help out people you you don't really get paid to donate blood, but at least for the United Blood Services. But you know, it's definitely a worthy cause if you want to help people out. I mean, people. I mean, people want to. I mean, people need need blood. You know, probably more than anything else in the world. And there's definitely quite a bit of a shortage of uh, blood donors, and I will. Happily, happily, uh, give blood. Um, um, uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, I was distracted, but uh, anyway, uh, I highly suggest that each and every one of my listeners uh, decides to uh, go out and get blood. I mean, do I have any fear of do I have any fear of needles? I definitely do not have a fear of of needles. And basically that fear is just I mean, it's understandable, but you know, it's I mean, I mean for the greater good, I'd rather help out people than succumb to my own fear of needles if that makes sense, any sense or not, but, but anyway, uh, some other news, I will be taking a little bit of a break, uh, don't, don't expect a new episode of the Darth Retro podcast this next week, uh, you can probably expect a new one, uh, you can definitely expect a new one, uh, to come up in, uh, not, this next week, but the week after that, which is the week of uh, week of uh, October 21st through the 27th. Oh, and to even make my uh, win total present prediction uh, for the Timberwolves. Um, I think uh, I think if we can get at least more than 40 wins, I, I'll definitely be happy with it. You know, I think I think we have a good chance to uh, get to the playoffs. 
which definitely says quite a bit because we haven't been to the postseason since 2003, at least. 2003, 2000, 2004, when we went to uh, the conference, uh, Western Conference uh, Championship Series uh, against the Lakers. And unfortunately, the Lakers won that series and you know, got pretty much beat up by the Pistons in uh, the 2004 Finals. So, so if we can get at least 40 to 45 wins, I'll be happy with it. I mean, 42 wins is 41 wins is a 500 season. 42 is a winning season. So. So if we can get a winning season, I'll definitely be happy with it. So anyway, uh, back to the podcast. Um, so definitely don't expect a new episode, which would be episode 15, until two weeks uh, from now, at least. So until that time, I will see you all later. Peace.